Well, it's now time to meet Australia's felt tip super heroine, Texter Queen. Her work explores complex issues of culture and race and identity, and her tool of choice is the humble felt tip pen. And uh, she's recently introduced photography into her work. Would you please welcome Texter Queen? Hi. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people as the traditional owners of this land uh, and pay my respects to Elders past and present. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Um, and thinking on that, when I got the prompt for this talk of talking about family histories and stories, I thought about it and I was like, oh, I feel at this stage uh, hesitant to go literally into family stories and histories because I've been showing my work in institutional and um, commercial contexts for nearly 20 years and I feel like often, my, well, my work talks allegorically about um, my history, family legacies, cultural and colonial leg legacies, but often when I'm interviewed, um, I'm asked really personal questions about my upbringing and it's often in a way I feel t um, I'm processing all those dynamics in my work and uh, I often when I do make vulnerable beyond my work those stories, it's taken in a way to often trivialise my work when I'm making work to process those dynamics, that's why I'm making it. And um, yeah, and I think it's a way also that um, in the context I uh, show or when mainstream journalists interview me, it's a way of asserting, oh, it's along the lines of the question, where are you from, um, to kind of assert who is from this land and whose land it is as uh, instead of ind indigenous sovereignty to, to for white settlers to be like, you're not from here, let's concentrate on that. So anyway, that was a long ramble in relation to Indigenous sovereignty. But now, uh, in lieu of th talking about my family who is here though, that was my nephew um, before, um, I'm going to show you my allegorical life story from conception to death that I made a few years ago while I was um, being mentored by an amazing artist called Emery Douglas and a writer called Leah Lakshmi uh, Peeps and Peepsna Samarashina um, in Oakland, California, and uh, it's r referencing both Australia. Uh, oh, you'll see it, but it's uh, I'm of Goan Indian origin, and it's uh, references a lot of imagery that is supposed to be a fantastical representation of uh, Goan identity. So, and I'm going to read the short poems that I wrote that go along with the story. We incubate in coconut womb before it became allegory for our assimilation. We are pulled from home, coconut water breaks over cogs of colony. We exist together across time, ancestors, self, descendants. The present is our portal. We leave for a better life, become a new blemish on white Australia. We drink their goodness filling mouth, eyes, ears, drown in whiteness, pure and neutral. <coughs> we are bound to escape pathology broken by ancestral cosmology. We embrace to connect in an arm trunk wrestle under our family tree, an elephant never forgets. We continue our bloodline, milk circles to stars and sea, expecting our potential.
We exist within each other. Coconut eyes overflow. Under sunrise, sunset, our epic silhouette. We reunite, awake, in a tender forever. Oh, you didn't need to change the next one. I can change it myself. <laughs> um, so, yes, that's my series, Coconut Legacy. Um, I think I'll just go on to talk about the other works. So... Uh, these are from a series called Unknown Artist, where I was there, um, different manifest manifestations, self-portraits uh, around identity. And this one's called Subcultural Charms, and I've reappropriated the Gothic nose chain, um, the Indian nose chain, the Gothic nose chain, um, and put the charms representing different cultural influences on my life of being born on the lands called Australia. And so I have a baby rattle that says it's a girl as about having gender uh, imposed as a binary. Um, the map of uh, India inside of the map of Australia is about the dual identities. Um, a baby cube that has um, English, the ABC on it, as it's about only knowing the colonial language of English. Um, the wedding cake, which is about heterosexuality, monog monogamy, marriage, um, this dollar sign for capitalism, the influence of Catholicism with the cross, and then there's a little family portrait in there that represents all those dynamics. And this one is called Call of the Crocotta. That's uh, based on the Indian legend around the Crocotta that's kind of based on the hyena. Um, and I liked uh, this as a sort of allegory for my own gender fluidity because there's mythology that the Crocotta hyena can um, switch between male and female and... Uh, yeah, has many powers and, <laughs> um, yeah. And then hyenas are matriarchal and I just really identified with that. Uh, this one is a self-portrait as Gandhi returned from the dead as a s salivating zombie. And I chose to make the image like this because I was thinking of Gandhi as this like one of the most famous Indian cultural icons, but he's a very complicated figure too in that he also expressed anti-black racism and was uh, sexually forward with young women and it's like not something that is really talked about, but so many leaders are very comp complicated uh, beings and that... It, we actually dehumanise people by putting them on pedestals um, when there is such complexity to them. So also as a self-portrait, I'm kind of talking about that and how, I don't know, getting put on a... Uh, yeah, just how I'm a complicated person. Uh, and this is related to, this is in the series that I'm showing another work from as part of the show. Uh, it's called Invasive Species on Wurundjeri Land and I did it while I was um, at, in a residency at Laughing Waters and it's the local landscape there and I've imposed different Indian uh, floral el and animal elements onto it as like a meditation on being a neo-colonial presence on Indigenous land. And uh, how does your cultural identity um, influence your experience of place? And how does that place influence your ideas of identity? And it's probably the only work I'll ever do like this because it took me very many months of highly detailed work. The, all my work is about a metre a meter high. Uh, this is called Blessing. And I use in a lot of my work... 
uh, this ambiguous milk, which is either, is it dairy milk representing whiteness? Is it coconut milk? What kind of, is it bodily fluid? Uh, I use that work a lot. And this was also done uh, during that residency. And I don't know if you can see, but in the little ferns, which are local ferns there, I've like imposed on the little curled ferns, um, small curled elephant trunks also. And this is the work that's in the show. It's called Roots. Um, I'm just going to read from what I have written about this work. Because for some reason, I seem to be a little bit nervous and I'm not really a nervous person. I don't know what's going on. Um, oh, yeah. So I made this on Tappan Land in... Uh, the, when I was doing a residency in upstate New York, and uh, it's the, uh, I used the roots of a fallen oak that's uh, native to that land there that I drew, and the elephant trunk wrapping around me, and it's again about that idea of uh, being a person not from a land, being there as a neo-colonizer. Um, this is from, and then that series led on to this series of photography uh, that's called Eve of Incarnation, where I was doing a residency on Boomerang Country, which is um, Point Nepean National Park uh, in Victoria. And I was thinking while I was there of like the complicated, the idea of connecting to a land that you're not from and how complicated it is. And as a brown skinned body in the landscape, how there's ethnographic projections onto you. Um, and about the history of ethnographic photography and how do I, having a desire to connect with nature and knowing that nature is such a neutralising term when it's actually a land of a specific people, but how do I connect to that nature um, and, and that complication and how do I disrupt that I'm a, I'm a brown body in the landscape but not from there, and I so I'm referencing high fashion photography, and I would, I was draping myself in the seaweeds and the plants from the land, and yeah, I feel like there's many stories that are embedded in this, where it's also I see it as a science fiction um, allegory of an emigrant experience, like I was imagining myself in this very um, spectacular way of being an uh, ancient. Um, entity who swam across from my ancestral lands and found them myself on this land. And the title Eve of Incarnation obviously references Eve and finding, like, finding myself on another land and how do I clothe myself but with the land that is there. Um, yeah. And my mum actually came for a week to this residency too, so she was my assistant a bit. Oh, for that one, she was draping me, it was quite cold and um, scowling at uh, the nearby people that were like, why are they lurking? I'm like, it's an observation point right there, Mum. But, you know, I hardly, there was hardly anyone there, though. But, yeah, I really like this one. This is one of the few ones that somebody else took. I took most of them myself with a remote shutter, sh a sh remote shutter release, but someone else took this one. I feel like it has a very um, Venus sort of ref uh, feel to it. And then these following ones, I will read the description from, and I did them out of a residency, the Anasia Link residency I did in Varanasi, India, but in two months at the end of 2016. And it was a very intense time. I was on this uh, residency where I was the only person of Indian origin of, on that residency. And like most of the other artists there were there in a way to like have an exotic, wonderful time. And I was there the first time in 20 years, just trying to process what it was to be um, somebody, you know, not born there and returning there. And um, yeah, those feelings of connection and disconnection and being such a privileged person, being there and feeling so uh, far, far in experience from the other people that looked like me, but also not like the other, Australian person there at all. So um, this work in particular is kind of about that. I'll just read from here. 
a self-portrait processing ideas of cultural connection on returning to the motherland as a second generation emigrant of India, investigating her positioning having been rel relatively privileged in the diaspora whilst further distance from language and culture than, than those raised in the co colonised country of origin. Texter Queen reflects on projecting otherness onto those sharing tangential legacies yet living distant experiences. Women wearing departed... De Sorry, miss, I can't pronounce things. From various regions of India, float away behind her, an urban, resilient rhesus monkey covers her mouth while it screams a translation of the artist's frustrated disconnection and a culpable colonial legacy possesses her strained pupils. I think I'm over time, but I will just quickly go through the There's only a few more images. Uh, this one is a self-portrait as Queen Alexandra. Um, that's based on her coronation picture, but I've... Uh, She's cutting off the head of her white English rose, even though actually roses are from China. It was like a prestigious hunting dog at the time, but I thought it was like an interesting uh, thing of, about colonialism. <laughs> Next. Uh, this one's based on Leda and the Swan. It's called Leda, and I've substituted the white swan for the white peacock. And I was just thinking about this one in terms of exoticism and, like, fetishization of brown women by white men. I think it's kind of obvious. <laughs> and, yeah, I think I've run out of time. Thanks.